Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some City of Gangsters, shall we? Well, this was free on the Epic Game Store this week, and it looked like a really interesting kind of builder management game, and so I decided to boot it up. Now, normally, I don't like being, quote, the bad guy. Uh, I just have a tendency to want to, you know, not be mean or cruel to anyone. But this game seems cartoony enough that I can just embrace the uh, kind of, you know, almost caricature noir stylings of being a bootlegging gangster, maybe? <laughs> let's at least see how it unfolds. So let's play the tutorial as it's my first time. Oh, we're in Chicago. Well. Ah, it's populating the city. And now we're in 1920. All right, John Smith, 20 years old, American. You finally arrive in the big city, Chicago. The year is 1920, dawn of the Gilded Age. The country is prosperous but divided. The National Prohibition Act just made it illegal to sell, manufacture, or transport alcoholic beverages anywhere in the country. The law is seen as an attack on city residents and immigrants who don't support the temperance movement. Naturally, nobody in the city takes this law seriously. Illegal speakeasies and alcohol operators are popping up all over, and it's easy to persuade the police to look the other way. You arrive into this melting pot with a few dollars in your pocket and a family connection. You're staying with your uncle, Louis Rosk. I'm not pronouncing that right. He has a small business in the city, and he's going to show you the ropes. Oh, there's some ropes around? But you don't want to run the family store. You dream about making it big, and this situation is full of opportunities for someone like you. Someone who's not afraid to take risks. I'm not afraid at all to take risks. Does that mustache look like it's afraid to take risks? I don't think so. As you get off the train and take in the sights of skyscrapers and endless crowds, you already know. This is the beginning of something great. All right. Oh, it's Smith. It's my area. Lesson one. Look around. Oh, look at the graphics. It's kind of a very interesting. Almost like cell shaded, you know, uh, minimal textures, but you certainly get to feel very blocky. Uh, Lewis approaches you as you get off the train. John, my dear nephew, it's so good to see you. How do you like our neighborhood? Sure, it may not look like much, but it's ours. Let me show you around. Thanks, buddy. First thing to learn is looking around. Press WASD to look around. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I see. And you can also click and drag with the left mouse button. You sure can. To use the zoom in and out, press the F and R keys. Yep, there they go. Or the mouse wheel. Indeed. Finally, rotate with Q and E or click and drag with the middle mouse. I like when the controls are just pretty much universal and I would understand that. And by the way, the right mouse button and the escape key can be used to close dialogues and pop-up windows, except for this one. There's no closing it. All right. Lesson two. Who are you? The blue marker represents you on the game map and will follow the car as you drive around. Click on it to select it. I selected it. Lesson two. Did you see the bright orange column of light? Above your marker, it's hard to miss it. Am I going to heaven? That shows that you're currently selected to perform various actions. Gotcha. You can see all the information about the selected person on the right side of the UI. Let's examine it in order. Okay. First is the person's mug shot. Same as on the marker, so it's easy to identify who's who. It is my mug, and it's beautiful. Second is the vehicle you're driving, assuming you're assigned to one. I am, and it's quite the vehicle. Right next to that are your action points, which determine how much you can do, and your movement points, which 
determine how far you can drive per turn. This is getting interesting. I didn't expect it to be this kind of a thing. Um, you use those up as you drive around and get things done. If this person is assigned to a car, you'll see its inventory right below. Oh, this is hilarious. I'm just going to try to have as much fun with it as I can. I know in the intro and now you're going to, you know, think I'm uh, a little bit too much of a goody two-shoes, but I really do like to be a good person. But it is also funny to me that I have $300 in a baseball bat, that that's my inventory. And it's like in Seinfeld when, you know, the guy asks for a bat and he's like, do you need a ball or a glove? And he's like, no, don't need those. I'm not actually playing baseball. Meanwhile, the, right below the person's portrait, you can see their traits and details of their past experience. My traits are I like to wave, use paper clips, and sledgehammers. Moving the mouse over any of these elements will reveal more details. Go ahead and try it. So let's see, wave. I'm friendly. This decreases the cost of gaining control of a new building, decreases the impact of negative social actions. I'm organized, which means I get faster experience gain while managing operations and I'm hard working that's cool um, finally select somebody you have the uh, when you select someone you have three options you can click on their marker above the car or click on their crew card in the upper right uh-huh or press the number one key to select the first member I did it number one. Oh gosh that destroyed the tip well too bad all right, now let's look at your crash, or your cash, my well, like crash, and vehicles. Up here, you see your cash. I got 850 bucks. This is the total stored in all your buildings and vehicles. Am I the only one that thinks that my uncle looks like he's about 18 years old and John Smith looks like he's 50? Like, I seem like the older one than a good old uncle here, but whatever. I guess it's the mustache. Move your mouse over it and see how much you have in which location. And also how much you've gained or lost this turn. Alright, so most of my money is in Lewis's Lumber and Supply Company. And then I got 300 bucks on me in the car next to my baseball bat. Next to your vehicles, cars and trucks. Next to each you have the number owned and the max number you can handle at the moment. I am missing a truck. You'll need parking spaces or repair shops to increase the max number. And to the left of that are your corners and crew size. <laughs> right now your crew is just you by yourself. I don't I got what, one corner? I need some more corners. You'll be able to hire a bit more people once you expand your territory a bit. Mouse over to see your details. I got one corner and I got crew cap one. I got one business and I got a little bit bonus. For my territory size. Um, the buttons on the far left show a variety of overlays and informational dialogues. We'll come back to them later. Good. Now if you look in the upper right, you'll see the current date. Today is June 1st, 1920. This is a turn-based game, and each turn lasts seven days. Okay. If you ever run out of action points or movement points, press the next turn button to advance to the next turn. Go ahead and press it now, and we'll continue once you've done that. All right, I pushed it. As you can see, the date advanced to June the 8th. On each turn, all your action points and movement points get refilled as well. Okay? I understand. Lesson 4, the safe house. Now this building here is going to be your safe house. Let's take a look inside. Okay, click on the marker to open the building dialog. From the outside, this looks like a regular business operated by myself, your Uncle Lewis. But inside, there's plenty of storage and room to start a new operation. It's part of you, or maybe I'm just going to speak for myself. It's always nice to have a, a front, you know, where it looks like your normal lumber supply company. And then in the back, you've got all sorts of lumber that no one expected. Uh, look at this tab in order. Uh, this is the business tab. Okay. This is the legitimate business that I've been running. It'll provide good cover for whatever operation you want to set up. All right. So right now we've got like a small warehouse and, you know, we all we do make some money here. Next, click on the storage tab. 
This shows what's being stored in the basement. Don't go looking in there. There's a lot of booze here dating from before Prohibition. Oh yeah, we got homemade beer. Nice. We'll make good use of that in a bit. I bet we will. Nothing to see here. Just a warehouse. Next, click on the back room. Ooh, gosh, we get a back room. This panel shows what's set up in the back of the building. Right now it's empty, but you could start a new operation. I can't wait to start a new operation in this back room. And click on the corners tab. This dialog shows information about the corner we're on. A corner is a basic unit of territory. Every building belongs to some corner or another, and corners may belong to someone's territory. These are the businesses in the corner. Corbin's Polish Pastry Shop and the Great Western Junkyard. Whenever you're at some corner, you can visit all the businesses there. This shows your respect level at this corner and the respect of other people who are known around here. Because you have very high respect level, thanks to me telling people about you. Yeah, thanks for that, Uncle. This corner became part of your territory. Oh yeah, they love me around here. Much better than Bogdanov's crew. Conversely, this is the heat level at this corner. Mouse over it to get more details. This is a quiet part of the city. Nobody's made a lasting impression here. Not yet, anyway. Dun dun dun. Illegal activity generates heat, and heat attracts police attention. We don't want Officer Joe Smith poking around. Speak of the devil. Well, I wouldn't say that about the friendly Chicago Prohibition era police. Here is the information about the police precinct room. Mouse over to, to get more details. The cops aren't interested in this corner. <laughs> we haven't paid this officer off. <laughs> Maybe you could keep it that way. So far, it's been quiet, and quiet is good for business. And let's close this now and get back to our safe house. So we just click on the X, and it goes back here. Now click on the tab with my portrait. There he is. This is me, your dear Uncle Lewis. I told your parents I'll take you in and help you get started in the city. Close this dialogue for now. All right. As I've been beating my gums for a while now, let's go for a walk instead. Gosh, that's a terrible way to... Is, is that idiom to describe talking? It sounds painful. I didn't mind that much. All right, let's go for a walk. Lesson five, paying a visit. Uh, I can't help but laugh at all this stuff. Let's go pay someone a visit, a.k.a. shake them down for some protection fee or whatever it is we're going to do here at the, at the Polish bakery. Click on the marker to visit the owner. Hi, Laura. I'm sure you're happy to see me. We're now visiting Laura C Corbin, who runs Corbin's Polish Pastry Shop. We'll have to go have a chat in one second, but first let's find out more about them. Mouse over the portrait and you'll get a variety of useful details about them. Their traits and temperament are useful to know and they'll impact your dealings with them. Ethnicity is also important as people of the same ethnicity as you will be more friendly toward you. What? what kind of a... Well, I guess we're going to run with their system of... Uh disturbingly accurate appraisal of unfortunately how we superficially evaluate each other okay let's see um, she's irreverent and she's not likely to appeal to the religious crowd well we're not really religious in, unless you consider menacing people with baseball bats to be a religion she's an acquaintance and she's Polish I don't know, are we Polish? I guess that's a nationality, not really an ethnicity, perhaps. Um, let's see. This meter will show how they feel about you. Mouse over it to get more details. We've acquired two favors, their opinion of you, plus 22 points. They know you from way back in the day. And because I'm friendly. So they kind of like me. This person, also, they also owe me a favor or two. You'll be able to spend them later, but choose carefully. They don't come often. I'm here to collect on that favor. I need two scones. 
butter them up. And now we'll look over here. This is how we can strike up a friendly conversation with this person. You can see what they're saying on the left, and we can choose our response on the right. Um, bakeries use yeast, water, and some grain to make bread. Thank you for explaining that. Those same ingredients can be used for other, more lucrative products. Ah, I love it. We might be able to get our hands on malt syrup here that we'll only use for baking. Just baking. I love how we're sneaky even in a tip, but we're going to use this. This is kind of fun. Like, we're going to use this shop as a legitimate way to kind of, like, launder ingredients to not raise suspicion that we'll use for making booze. Uh, let's see. So, we can, like, talk about buying and selling. We've got a good relationship. Um, and like, we can claim a favor, or we could say, I'll see you around. Go ahead, select the first option to ask about buying and selling. Let's talk about buying and selling. For sure, let's see if there's something you're interested in. I sell corn syrup, malt syrup, and stoneware crocks. If you wanted to buy or sell something, this is how you'd go about it. But there's another thing we should check out. Um, let's see who they know. Click on the connections button highlighted in the upper left part of your screen. Who do you know? This dialogue displays many more details about the person, including... Oh, wow, look at all these, like, ribbons running off, describing her connections and showing where they're located. This is kind of cool. Um, including personal info and, most importantly, all the connections we know about which are limited for the time being. Connections are going to be crucial for you. If you're trying to buy or sell any alcohol these days, you got to know folks who like you and who trust you. You'll need to learn how to work those connections to get what you need, but that's for later. For now, we'll close this dialog box. Um, okay. Smash it. And how do you change... How about a change of scenery? Let's go for a ride. You drive. All right, Uncle. Let's drive. We're going to the clothes shop. Here's another nearby business. This one's a corner away. Click on its marker, and let's see what happens. As you can see, some information is displayed about the carnation cleaners... But we're too far to visit. You are too far from this business to interact. You have to send one of your crew members here. You'll need to drive over there to actually talk to this business owner. Fair enough. This is something you'll run into often. In order to get things done, you or one of your cronies need to actually physically go there and talk to somebody. I can't do this on the old cell phone. All right. So let's drive there. Click on your marker to select yourself as the active crew member. I'm going to push one. Now, right-click on the location closest to that business. Um, okay, so I guess it's this corner. I drove there. You can see that the markers on the businesses change color as you drive. They do. They become green or gray. The business on the same corner as you turn green to indicate you can visit them. Conversely, the businesses that are too far are dark gray. I see that. Seeing as this is all copacetic, I have a task for you to try on your own. Oh, I haven't got to use the word copacetic today. That's great. It's very copacetic. Drive around till you find your cousin Albert. He runs Cafe Lib Libra nearby. He'll be able to liquidate some of the illegal inventory we've got stashed in the basement. I won't tell you where it's located. That's your first task, but it's near here. Well, I see a big coffee cup. Find him and pay him a visit. I'll leave you alone for now. And remember, if you ever run out of movement points, just hit the next turn button. Okay. Right, what is this? Cafe Libra. It's right there. So I need to select myself. And then it's gray, so I can't get there. So I got to go to this corner. Now, if I, like, highlight this, will it... I wonder if there's anything I can push on the corner to see what business is. Oh, they kind of flash. Like, when you move the cursor over it, they... they flash temporarily to show you which businesses are on that corner. I'm in. Great. You found Cousin Albert. Now ask him about buying and selling. Coffee and a pastry. Love it. This guy likes me a little bit better. Let's see what you got. Looks like you can sell him some of the homemade beer we've got stashed away. Oh, okay. Perfect, because we were cousins... He's in the family, so we know each other. But you don't have any in your car. I don't. I just have the bat. So we'll need to come back with the goods. Close this dialogue for now. All right. 
Drive back to the safe house and let's pick up some homebrew. Understood. Alright, safe house. Where are you at, safe house? It's over here. Okay, so I need to get to the corner that is closest to it, which is... Oh, I gotta select myself, and then it's this one. Now open the safe house dialog and switch to the storage tab. Understood. I don't know. I mean, you know, there's so many levels removed from this. Obviously, it's fake. It's a game. It's digital. Um, you know, there's these cartoony kind of graphics. There's this really low vibin light, you know, piano jazz happening. So it doesn't feel real, but there's something, you know, kind of comforting about the fact knowing that I'm going to pick up illegal alcohol and, um, uh, sell it to my cousin for illegal distribution. Ah, the things we can do in games. All right, so um, I need to open the storage panel, so I click on this. I go to storage, and I need the booze. Storeroom contain the contents are on the left, and your trunk is on the right. Now click on the beer until you've loaded up 20 crocs. I mean, crocs seem, you know, like... Not the best way to do this, but if it's all we've got, we're going to crock it. Um, Two-door passenger car. It's 40 cubic feet, and if I put in 20 crocs, it becomes 52% full. Good, we're done here. Close the dialog. All right, I closed it. Now go back to Albert and sell him as much beer as he's willing to take. I'll leave you alone until you're done. All right, so I got to go to the next turn because I think I'm out of movement points here. No, I got some. Never mind. Let's go back to Al. I love having this car. What's up, dude? Let's talk about buying and selling. I want to sell some homemade beer. That sounds interesting. It is interesting. I might have some in the car right now. And he's going to give me eight bucks a crock. And he'll, he'll buy 17 crocks. So let's sell him all that he'll buy. And I made some cash. If you look in the upper left, you'll see that your relationship with Albert improved a lot. It did. Look at this. You've been doing business together. So we got 168 days of 15 plus to our rep. That's great. Doing business with people improves relationships. And especially if the business is of the illegal kind. Well, they like it better. I love that we do illegal business together. <laughs> As your relationships improve, you start collecting favors. You owe me one for that time when you bought the illegal alcohol from me. Because Albert has a high opinion of you, you now have a couple of favors ready to use up. Let's spend a favor in the conversation with Albert. Select the second option to talk about favors and helping out. I can't wait to talk to him about this. I got a little, uh, I'm calling in the favor. We're family, right? How can I help? Now select the first option. Asking for contact introduction to someone who's also buying these kind of boots. Do you know anyone who's buying what I got for sale or selling anything I need? Wink, 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 Albert. I do indeed know someone who would buy that booze you have laying around. You should meet my good buddy Norman. Normie from Cheers. I love him. Um, you're getting offered an introduction to Albert's friend. Finish it and spend the favor to get the introduction. Tell me more. Um, I trust your judgment. P please put in a good word. All right, we got a connection. You now, um, we've been introduced to Norman Lindquist. Thanks to the warm introduction from Albert, he already trusts you and he'll be willing to talk about illegal goods with you. Great. This is moving along very well. Welcome to America, the land of opportunity. I love it. Introductions from trusted friends are going to be the foundation of your business. That's right. We need trusted friends. Make sure to keep an eye on your network and take introductions when you can. Now drive over to Norman and sell him some homemade beer. You know how to do this. I'll see you when it's done. I only have three on me. So I'm going to select myself. And <laughs> I love how I'm under the muscle tab. You know, I mean, I know this is the player character. This isn't actually named after me, but as a, pl as, you know, as a human, 
I'm never going to be listed under the muscle tab, um, and so it feels good to be considered muscle. All right, so let's see. This guy's over here, but I need to come back to the warehouse first. And I've got I've got some movement left. How much did I use to get here? Two. All right, so we're going to go into the old warehouse, and I'm going to go to the storage, and I'm just going to take out... I'm going to see. I don't know how much this guy's going to buy, but I'm going to take out, like... I'll do this again. I'll do 20, just because, you know, I'm finished loading. And I'm going to close this up. And I'm going to be like, what's my car got in it? Hey, why is it not telling me what my car has in it? Oh, there it goes. You have to push, you have to actually select the muscle or push one. I got 20. Okay, great. So let's go over here. Is this the, the dude? Suds and such? There he is. Look at this guy's fedora. You know he's it. He wants a little booze. All right, let's talk to him. Oh, good to see you again. It's actually the first time I've ever seen you, but yes. Um, so, what do you buy or sell here? For sure, let's see if there's something that you're interested in. In fact, I'm in the market for brick wine and homemade beer, Mr. Suds and such. I mean, I guess I am selling you suds, just not the kind of soap suds. I'm talking about the old alcoholic suds. I got homemade beer. Eight per crock. Um, that's great. I got some in the car. He'll buy 55? Whoa, I should have brought way more. That was my fault. Goodness gracious. Is there a, like, can I shift click to, yeah, shift click will just select everything. Well, I sold all, but man, I should have sold more. That's, I blew it. Exploration. Now, let me direct your attention over here. See this marker with the icon? That's a business that hasn't been scoped out yet. We don't know what goes on in there, but we can find out. If you're not already there, drive over to that corner so the marker turns green. Once you're there, click on the question mark to scope it out. Go ahead, I'll wait, all right? So, um, I will uh, drive over here, and then I'll click on the question mark, and we've scoped it. You took the time to hang out on the corner and observe the comings and goings, so it took an action point. I see. But now we've learned that it's called Keen's Pastry Shop, and we got some idea about what it does. You could see all the details if you mouse over the notification at the top of the screen. Um, okay. It says that it they've got ingredients that we can make fermented products with. It supplies restaurants all over town with a variety of foodstuffs. They'd also like to provide them with less legal libations if they could secure a source. Ah. Uh-huh. Okay. So we need to get them some less than legal libations. Once you start exploring the city, all businesses will start out unknown, and it's up to you to pick which ones to scope out. Speaking of which, it's a big city. Wow, it's huge. And it'd be good for you to get out there and explore a little bit. Corners that you haven't explored yet show up as sepia colored and you don't know what kind of businesses are located there. It's only after you explore a corner that you'll find out what's there. Go ahead and drive to this unknown corner. But just as a heads up, this will consume a lot of movement points. If you don't have enough, don't forget to advance to the next turn. All right, so they want me to go to this unexplored. Oh, it's going to take five to go there, even though it's such a short distance. But if, like, I already know, have it explored, it only takes one to go to a corner. So um, I'm out of points, so I'm going to have to... Um, I can't even start. I was wondering if I could just start the path and use one of my movement points to kind of save and only have to use four next turn, but it doesn't look like it. So we're going to go next turn. And um, I'm going to select our dude and drive over. So this is how map exploration works, bit by bit. Corner by corner, you can drive around, identify new businesses, scope them out, and then talk to the owners to find out what they're buying and selling. But if you can get warm intros that's much better because they already start out trusting you 
earning the trust of someone completely unknown is much harder. All right. Great, you're picking things up quickly, so now I have another task for you. Remember all the beer stashed at the safe house? Go ahead and sell it all off, all of it. Afterwards, we'll invest that money into some kind of a new operation, maybe a brewery or a speakeasy. So go around and try to sell more to Albert or anyone else who's buying. And if they introduce you to more people, take them up on it. I'll wait until you have $1,200 in total, and then we'll continue while well, I'm pretty close to that. All right. So what we need to do, first of all, is go back to the safe house. So I need to kind of um, travel here. Uh, okay. So you could kind of like right click on a location to, to drive to the closest corner, perhaps. All right, let's go to the storage and, um, oh, no, v no, you can't. I'm not there. I thought I was kind of there, but I'm not. I need to get a little bit closer to highlight that. Yeah, I got to go to this corner. This one doesn't work either. It's only this one. Oh, you can kind of see its area of influence. Well, no, that's just my territory. Anyway, I got to go here. Then now I can load it up. All right. So I'm going to like fill up the car with 40. And then I know Albert is down. So let me go. Uh, and let me just drive here. And, or Norman, I'm sorry. What do you buy and sell? I want to sell beer. And I've got some, and he'll buy 39 Crocs. So I'm going to say um, all of them, and we make 312 bucks. And we did it. Well, aren't you just hitting on all six today? Now that you have a nice pile of dough, we can start building a new life for ourselves in the city. Sweet. Now let's talk about operations. The real money in this city comes from manufacturing and selling your own illegal alcohols. The Prohibition Act made booze making and distribution illegal and therefore incredibly profitable. As long as you don't get pinched, that is. All right, to establish a new operation, you'll need a building you control. With some empty space in the back. Fortunately, there's plenty of room in the back of the safe house, so we can establish a new operation there. Drive back to the safe house. All right, I'm there. First, let's unload some of this cash. Open the safe house dialog by clicking on its marker. Then switch to the storage tab. Okay. Now move a bunch from your vehicle in, into the safe house. Remember, you can use control and shift keys to move cash and resources faster. I'll wait till you have 900 stored. All right. So, um, shift does... Oh, okay. So, shift isn't all. It's just 100 per click. All right, cool. So, let's do 100... Oh, no, I'm moving it the wrong way. One, and let's go ahead and... There we go. Great. Now switch to the empty back room tab. All right. As I mentioned, the back room is available. Press the new operation button. Okay. And these are the various operations you can set up. These are just the ones you know how to run right now. In the future, you'll learn about many more, but right now you can only make a few things. Okay. Since you know several people who are interested in beer, let's build the homebrew operation and you'll be able to distribute it easily. Make sure that the operation is selected and press build. Okay. So I'm going to select um, homebrew and I'm going to press build. So if I combine malt syrup and stoneware crocs, every four weeks I make 50. And it's going to cost 600 bucks and four lumber, um, which is I have exactly enough. And it'll take 35 days to get it done. Um, would you like to install it? It'll take 35 days. Yes, that's fine. Great. It'll take a few turns until it's operational. But in the meantime, here's an overview of how this will work. Here you can see the brewery consumes malt syrup and empty stoneware crocks in order to produce crocks full of homemade beer. Move your mouse over the different elements to see more details. Malt syrup, I have 10. I only have 30 crocks and I can make 50, okay? 
Also, you already have enough malt syrup in store, storage, but you're missing the crocs. You'll have to go and buy more. I know that the uh, there's someone I already talked to who sells them. Because without supplies, this operation won't amount to much. And by the way, later on, when you have more money and people, consider assigning a manager to the operation or installing some upgrades and expansions. They can make a world of difference in improving your profit margins. Okay. Well, isn't this the bee's knees? You're already starting a new operation, and with only a little bit of help from your uncle, your parents would be so proud. Which reminds me, I should write them. Yeah, you should. Agreed. In the meantime, you should go and procure more stoneware crocs so that the operation could start producing some goods for sale. I'm not sure who sells them. You'll have to drive around and figure that out yourself. Understood. All right, so I'm pretty sure. Let's take a quick look at some informational overlays and reports, which are going to help you in various ways. Oh, okay. Um, in the upper left corner, you can see a variety of drop-downs with additional information. Click the first one. This is the resource display. It shows you who you know that buys or sells specific resources. Go ahead and scroll down to Stoneware Crocs and click on it to see who trades in that resource. Okay, um, we want Stoneware Crocs. You can also look through the other resources. You can also bring up this overlay by pressing Z. All right. So Stoneware Crocs. Ah, I see. So she sells it right here. Well, Arnold sells it, and then the Polish pastry shop sells it. You could select multiple resources and then make, mark your selection as a favorite by pressing the left highlighted button. Okay. These favorites will be remembered whenever you open the overlay. You can then toggle your favorites by hitting the right highlight button. Okay. Feel free to try it out. All right, so I'll be like, hey, um, select this as a favorite, and then show me my favorites. Cool. When you're done, close the overlay using the same top left button, and we'll continue. All right, I closed it. I pushed Z, though. Next, it's information. Click here to open it. There are several overlays here, but we'll focus on just a few right now. The respect overlay shows you your level of respect in the neighborhood. Your territory grows based on the respect you have on each block, so it's important to grow and keep respect levels high. We'll talk about how to do that a little bit later. You can also bring it up by pushing C. Okay, so how's our respect? It's okay. The heat overlay is also very important. It shows the amount of police attention on each corner such as due to illegal activities or fights. The higher the heat level, the higher the chance of a surprise police visit. You can also bring up this report by pressing X. Okay? The police precincts overlay shows which corner belongs to each precinct. I see. Each precinct has one captain who patrols the area. It might be a good idea to befriend them. Click continue when ready. The zoning button shows zoning regulations. Businesses are typically limited to industrial and commercial zones, but residential zones might have their own surprises too. Below that, the population shows the distribution of different ethnicities in the city. People of the same ethnicity are predisposed to like each other a little bit more than average, so use them to your advantage. I see. So... I'm like, all right, Polish, Norwegian, Italian, Irish, nice. Um, now the third drop down is a collection of reports. Press this button to reopen it. This drop down lists a number of reports you can consult related to different parts of the game. The financial report is probably the most immediately interesting one but the others are going to be very useful. Feel free to look through, through them and click continue. So here's our finances. This is our ledger. All right. And here's our crew skills. We can make wine, homebrew, and moonshine. Um, our mission is the tutorial. Rival outfits. We've got a few here. The Morgan outfit, for example. My legacy. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Finally, the fourth button 
shows the game encyclopedia, which can contains information about various aspects of the game in one place. Take a look. Oh, cool. You can get all like it's a built-in manual. That's great. Whenever you have questions about some game element, click here first. Like homemade booze. Oh, and it's like hyperlinked and everything. This is very nice. All right, I'll let you get back to your goal of gathering supplies. I'll be back a little bit later to talk about territory. Growing your crew and your territory is going to be crucial in order to maximize profits and also protect yourself from rival outfits. Oh yeah, did I say rivals? If you haven't run into any rivals yet, don't worry, you will, but we can talk about that later as well. For now, concentrate on getting some beer production going, follow the goals in the upper left of your screen, and buy some more stoneware crocs and deliver them to your safe house. By the way, as you drive around to visit people, instead of a regular click, you can use the shift left click to get right into a buying or selling conversation, skipping other topics. Understood. All right, so um, I'm going to push Z, and it'll bring up the supplies, and I've got Stoneware Crocs favorited, so you can see that they're already highlighted. And I'm just going to try to shift... Well, actually, I'm, I'm close enough to just click right here and be like, hey, I want to buy uh, Stoneware Crocs. And she sells them at 2 bucks a croc. She's like, I've got them, and I want them, I'll pick them up right now. She's got 30, so I'm going to buy all of them. And it's going to give, cost 60 bucks, and I'll buy it. And fantastic. Now, did that boost our rep? I hope so. Let's call in a favor. Um, and... Let's see if uh, she knows anybody. You should meet my friend Esther. Um, tell me more. Uh, and I trust your judgment, and she's over here. Please put in a good word for me. I'll use a favor for that. Great. Okay, and we'll close this, and then I'm going to um, just double-click on one to get back centered on my vehicle. I'm going to click into our operation here, storage, and I'm going to just um, unload everything from my car and finish loading. And I'm done. And let's talk about another important thing, territory. Control of street corners is the cornerstone of every successful outfit. You need to have territory under your control before you can build more operations or hire any crew. I see. Right now you only have one corner under your control, the same one where your safe house is. But by my calculation, you'll need about five or six before you can start hiring more people and growing your outfit. Control over corners comes from respect. As locals learn about you, your respect rises, and if it's close to 100, your corner will switch over to pay allegiance to you. Territory brings many benefits. First, the more corners you have, the more people you can hire and buildings you can control. Second, businesses inside your territory will be offering you all sorts of opportunities, so it's good to expand as much as possible. Finally, and maybe I shouldn't be telling you this, but businesses inside your territory can be extorted for cash. It's a brutal thing to do, and it might have repercussions, but it does produce a steady revenue stream. In order to do any of that, you need to set up a front. A new front is how you get a foothold in a community by grabbing hold of a single corner first, and then using that front to bring all the surrounding corners into the fold as well. I'll show you how. Go and visit your cousin Albert and see if he'd be interested in running a front for you. All right, so I'll just click on here. And we need to go to um, our cuz. And we're trying to drive, but we ran out of movement points, so we'll go to the next turn. And um, we need to go here. We need to talk to talk to our buddy. In the conversation, start with favors. And then ask about starting a front. we got a good relationship. Our outfit wants to expand our territory and take over this part of the city. I want you to run a front for us in your fine establishment. He says, what exactly is involved with running these fronts for you? Um, it's pretty simple. First, we need you to get locals on our side and gain some respect as benevolent protectors. So keep your ear to the ground for any opportunities to throw some money around for a good cause. Got it so far? I sure do. What happens then? Once your respect has spread, 
Once people know about us and we can control a new corner, our outfit will extend an offer of protection to local businesses. That's right, we protect people. We'll help protect our friends from misfortune. In exchange, they'll come here to drop off some envelopes. I need you to collect them for me and not ask any questions. I know you're hesitant, so I'll also throw in 84 bucks to sweeten the deal. It'd be an honor to work for you. Let's do it. Hey, your respect is rising in this city. Another new corner has been added to your crew's territory. Great. A new corner has been, or front's been set up. You can see this corner immediately joined your territory. I do, it's right there. Fronts serve multiple purposes. They can be used to expand your territory by increasing your respect in the neighborhood. Also, if you're extorting businesses, they'll be collecting the cash for you to pick up. Now let's have the new front start working on increasing your respect to grow territory even more. Go back to Cousin Albert. All right. But this time ask him about expanding your territory. How's the front doing? Then agree to his price and he'll get started. Let's talk about the locals. I need to expand my territory. I have an idea what to do. Have you seen the state of the parks? They're a disgrace. Dead plants, overgrown paths, broken equipment. If a local leader were only to come forward to fund the upkeep, that person would have the respect of an entire block. It'll cost 10 bucks right away and then 10 bucks on the first of each month. Um, yeah, we'll do it. I got it. I got a bunch of cash. Good. Albert's hard at work improving your name recognition in the neighborhood. In seven or eight turns, that corner should recognize you and join your territory. I'll wait with you until it does. Waiting for a new corner to join a player's territory it should only take a few turns. Meanwhile, you can go about your business. Okay. All right. Um... Let's see. Well, what do we want to do? Do we want to explore? Poke around a little bit? I mean, I don't really have much to sell, do I? Let me look what I have in the storage. I do have 34 homemade beer, so we could go sell some, sure. Drive over here. Load it up. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is push Z, and I'm gonna say who buys homemade beer. I'm also gonna favorite this, um, so I could sell it to uh, Albert or the cleaners, I guess. So let's go here, and let's see how much uh, how much can you buy. He could buy five. All right. I'll sell some. And then... I'm too far. All right. Let's, uh, let's drive up here. And then be like, hey, dude. Let's talk. I got some beer to sell. I got some. 17. You're in. Pleasure doing business with you. I'm going to push Z... And there is somebody... Ooh, there's a policeman right there. You scoped out a new business. The Polish pastries. Um, I'm highlighting it. Wait, I need to highlight it better than that. Oh, is it right here? Um, yeah, let's go check out the Polish pastry place. All right, here. I gotta talk to him first. How can I help you? Oh, uh, we, we don't have a good enough opinion. Or no, I have no action. So let's go to the next turn. Let's see if I can do it. What do you what do you buy and sell? He, he can sell me corn syrup and barley. All right. We've taken control of this corner. Some things will change from now on. Um, I don't like where this is going. Oh, we can extort them. Yeah, I'm not going to shake them down at the moment. Um, but I probably should if I want to be a real crime lord. Awesome. All right. Well, we've got two corners. And we're rocking and rolling, uh, getting through some of the basics of this game. But this is a very deep and complicated game. But I've got to tell you, it's got a really cool little vibe to it. It's like evil monopoly 
you know, act, well, Monopoly is evil by itself. So it's it's similar. It's kind of fun driving around. And uh, I like the choices that you can make and uh, all of the ins and outs that we've learned about so far. And there's even more to go. But I think this is a good place to stop the first episode of just kind of seeing what this game is, learning how to play. And I'd love to know what you guys think of it. Have you played this game before? Do you recommend it? Have you got far into it? Um, do you want to see more of this game? Talk to me in the comments below, and um, let's see what everybody thinks about it. I'd be really interested to know uh, what your takeaway is from this game, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.